Essentially, trust is the degree to which we see another person as being reliable, honest, uh, as able to do what they say they will do. Everyone's got their own personal idea of what trust means based on their positive or negative experiences. But essentially what we're talking about is the ability, the reliability, the honesty of an individual or of a group of people. What makes you trust someone? Well, they have to be good at their job. I think that's really important. You have to believe that they know what they're doing. And I guess the next thing is, is that they have to admit when they've got things wrong and take responsibility for their mistakes. We make judgments all the time on the degree to which we trust our colleagues, our friends, family members. And you can see the kind of upward spiral of, of trust when you build a relationship with someone based on trust. And similarly, you can see the significant impact on a relationship when there's a lack of trust. I think trust is very hard to build, but it can be destroyed in an instant. And rebuilding it's even harder because you've already been let down before. So interesting, trust isn't simply reflected in one-to-one -one interactions. We have trust in our team, but also trust in a wider organisation. Trust is part of the, the culture, part of the way that people behave together. We see cultures of very high trust, where lots of assumptions are made, but people feel very safe and secure. And we see cultures of very low trust, where people are uncertain about making decisions or saying what they really think and what they really feel. The senior management team here are a bunch of hypocrites. I mean, they're always talking about our corporate values and behaviours, but it's more of a do as I say, not as I do. Nobody trusts them. And trust is invariably a result of uh, the way that senior people, the way that leaders behave within their teams. Senior management don't like to share information. They don't trust us with it. But if you have that kind of mentality at the top, then it just filters down throughout the whole organisation. It's based on the amount of information that is shared, how often that information is shared, how often people feel that they have a voice to shape the future of the organisation. Those different factors make a huge impact on the, the culture of trust and openness in an organisation. You've got people working in silos and keeping things to themselves. There's no team spirit and nobody wants to ask for help or admit that anything's wrong because there's this fear that everyone's going to think that they're weak and that they can't cope. If you think about leadership uh, being all about relationships, trust is a, as a vital component of building and developing relationships. You don't even need to look at uh, where trust has been eroded or, uh, or hasn't been built to see the consequences. Things like conflict, things like distrust um, are erosive in, in a leadership situation. From a psychological perspective, it increases the degree to which we will be open, we'll be honest with other people, and that creates an upward positive effect in terms of, from a leadership perspective, the degree of willingness to take risks, the degree of security we feel within a team, therefore how open we are, how creative we are, how much information we share with others in a work environment. That shows how important trust as a concept, as a feeling, is in, in organisations. And at the end of the day, if somebody trusts you and puts their faith in you, well then you're more likely to do the same back, aren't you? I mean, it's a two-way street. We tend to think of trust as a single concept, but different types of trust develop for specific reasons. Cognitive trust develops through our professional interactions. So when someone shows us that they have the skills and ability to do their job, or that they have sufficient knowledge and experience, our cognitive trust in them increases. Emotional trust, on the other hand, grows as a result of time spent together, talking and getting to know each other and sharing the same values and it increases the degree to which we feel safe and secure with someone. The third type, transactional trust, develops between team members as they begin to rely on each other to deliver results and builds gradually through a process of negotiation, delivery and renegotiation. Trust is a key part of being inclusive in our leadership and building relationships with everyone on our team. We know that it's easier for us to build um, trust with people who are similar to ourselves so one place where it's really important to be more um, mindful about how we build and develop trust is with those who are, more, who are different to us. Not everybody builds trust in the same way. And something we know as business psychologists is that working with leaders, we see a whole range of different 
preferences towards building trust. So it's actually a measurable element of personality known as scepticism. And some people are very low in scepticism, so they find it very easy to give trust to others, so much so that they might be gullible or naive. At the other end of the scale, for one reason or another, some people will find it very difficult to give trust to other people. It's a very scarce commodity that they have and they give it very, very carefully. And the moment it's broken, it's gone. Once you've had my trust and you've let me down, it's gone. And actually, you need to understand that as a leader, that everybody will have some kind of preference, a strategy for giving trust that they've developed over time.